my desktop is looking like a mess. I've got post-it notes everywhere and I need to do something to simplify it. So today we're going to make a super simple desktop calendar. I've missed you all and I'm so glad to be back between COVID hitting, me becoming pregnant, getting a nursery ready, and then our little one coming a little earlier than expected and spending some time in the NICU. Things have been crazy and I haven't been around, so I'm so grateful to all of you that are here. Make sure you subscribe and let's jump into today's video. With everything going on, my more complicated daily, monthly spreads have just become too much for me to handle. So today I'm jumping into Keynote to make myself a super simplified desktop calendar. So I'm gonna start just by pulling an image off the internet that's cute, that'll make a great background and fitting it to my slide. Then I wanna go in and create little boxes for each day of the week. So to do this, I'm gonna use my shape tool. I think I'm gonna use some rounded corners I'm not going to worry about perfect spacing now, I just want to make this one square look the way I want it to look before playing around with spacing. So the fill I want to be white, and then I'm going to play around with the border a little bit, find a color I like, as well as a width of the line that I like. And I'm actually going to use my color grabbing tool to pull one of these grays from the marble and use that as a starting off point. I'm going to add a shadow just to give it a little depth and then once I have it the way I like it I'm going to duplicate this seven times because my goal is to have one of these boxes for each of the seven days of the week and again I'm still not worrying about the perfect size. Then I'm going to begin spacing them out. I do want to make sure they're all spaced out evenly so I just want to make sure that they're all the same distance from each other right now. Once I have seven squares and I like how they look and they're spaced out well, my next job is gonna be to make them proportional to the whole screen. So I'm gonna select them all by holding shift and then I'm gonna go to arrange and select group. And this puts them as one object. And now when I stretch them, I stretch the entire object. So I can stretch them to fit across the top and then I can center it across the top so everything looks very even. I can also then go back to arrange and select ungroup. So if for any reason I wanna change something or change the color, I can easily do that. Now down below, I wanna create a spot for to-do lists. I'm keeping things pretty rough right now because I still have to play around with some things, but I wanna create one list for work and one list for home. And these will kind of be like my post-it notes that usually sit all over my desk. So now with this final space, I wanna create just kind of a generic note, like I would have notes all over my desk. So I wanna make it skinnier so it looks different and turn it into a rectangle, not have those rounded corners. My next step is to make sure that the dimensions of this are gonna fit well with my iPad. So I'm gonna go up to document and I'm gonna look at the slide size. Now I do have a video planned out to do in the very near future where I'm gonna walk you through how I determine and the best size to use for my particular device and I'll show you the strategy I use so you can apply it to your iPads or whatever device you're using but for now I'm just gonna put in the dimensions that work for this so these dimensions take into account both my device as well as the program I'm using it on so yours might be different once I have the proper dimensions then I really have to start formatting and making everything fit so I'm gonna start by doing the background and then I'm gonna lock the background, that way when I click on other things it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna go back and hold shift and grab my little days of the week boxes up top, turn them into a group, and again resize them just like I did before. And now that they're on a bigger back top, I'm not loving that line, so I'm gonna go back through and ungroup them, but leave them all selected, and just make that line a little bit darker. And now I'm gonna take my little to-do list box and do the same thing, ungroup them, make the line a little bit darker, and also reformat them just so they fit nicely. And now I'm gonna take my little notepad, stretch it out to fit it a little bit. And actually I kinda of like the idea of this being angled, like it was almost messy and on a desktop. So I am going to go over to rotation under arrange and just tilt it a little bit till I like how it looks. And you can use the dial and you can also type in the angle. And once I have that, I'm just gonna play around with it. I don't want it overlapping anything. So it's just a matter of playing with it. So it looks a little cockeyed, but isn't overlapping anything. My next step is gonna be adding the text that I'm gonna put into each of the boxes. So the first thing I wanna do is put the days of the week up top. So I'm gonna start with Monday, and then once I have Monday typed out, then I'm gonna start playing around fonts and colors until I find something that I like. 
And you've seen me do a few of these videos now where I'm actually formatting and doing the detail work in the end, and really it's a matter of choice. Do you want a cursive font? Do you want a bold font? Do you want it to say M-O-N versus Monday? This is really just the playing around with stage till you like the way it looks. And remember, the goal here is to have something that we can use over and over and over again, so make sure it's something you like. Once I have Monday the size I want, the color I want, the font I want, then I'm just going to simply duplicate it seven times and change it to the other days of the week. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to duplicate that Monday one more time, move it down to my list, and I'm going to label this work to do. I'm going to duplicate it, change this one to home to do, select both and then go to the text and change the size a little bit. And by having them both selected by holding down shift, I only have to do it once and I can guarantee that consistency. And now I've kind of got the template for all my boxes. So the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is to add little check mark lists that I can put under my to-do list. So to start, I wanna create my check mark box by adding a square. I'm going to go to a range and actually type in the size so I can guarantee that it's a square. So right now, even though it looks like a square, it's actually 27 by 25. So I'm going to change it to 25 by 25. I have no fill. And then I'm going to pull in that color that I used before for my actual boxes by using that color grab tool. And then I'm gonna create my line tool and just create my line that's gonna go next to it. And that's really a personal choice. If you don't want lines or check boxes and you just want blank space, you can do that as well. And actually I've noticed when I've done this on other planners, once I'm actually using it, it feels very big. So looking at it now, I think I'm gonna shrink it a little bit more. So I'm gonna go back to a range and instead of that 25 by 25, I think I'm gonna bring it down to something like 16. Once I have this looking the way I like it to look, then it's just a matter of duplicating it. Now, duplicating can be kind of tedious. I'll give you some tips and tricks that I've discovered along the way. The first is you'll notice I locked the actual white square in the background, and that's because it's going to allow me to select multiple things just by simply dragging my mouse over them. The other thing you'll notice is lining them up can be very tricky. In fact, sometimes I find on Keynote, it wants to be a little stubborn and askew things to the left and the right, and the arrow keys really help me out there. If you ever want to move something just a little to the left or a little to the right, just tap the arrow, the left or right arrow once or twice, and you'll notice it lines things up pretty well. Once I have a few lined up, then I'm going to select those, copy and paste them, just because it saves work. Instead of copying and pasting two, I am now copying and pasting four. And now, instead of copying and pasting four, I'll reselect all of those, that way I can copy and paste eight, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna continue this all the way to the bottom. Now that my work to-do list is done, I'm simply gonna copy and paste it, and move it over to my home to-do list. So my next step is to create my little notepad. So I'm gonna click on just one line, copy and paste it, and drag it over to my notepad. Now since my notepad has an angle on it, I wanna copy and paste that same angle, which I noticed was 8.1 to the line, just so that it really looks like the little notepad is angled the same direction. And then I'll go through the same process. I'll start with one line, get it to look exactly how I want it to look, and then I'm just gonna start copying and pasting it down. And there we have it. Now I've got a single page desktop calendar that's gonna allow me to do to-do lists as well as plan out my week all on one screen. Now I do like the idea of having options, so I'm gonna actually go through and copy and paste this onto another blank slide. And on this one, I'm gonna have the exact same, except I'm actually gonna go through and delete all of these lines. So it's more of a blank paper. So now I kind of have two different options. I can have one with lines or I can have one that's blank. I'm gonna show you guys one last trick that I like to do, which is to add pens and clips to my desktop calendar to really make it look like a desktop. So to do this, I'm gonna jump over to Google and just look for an image of a pen that I like that I think will look good against what I've built. So I'm gonna scroll through, just find a generic pen. You wanna find one that's laying flat and you wanna find one that has a really basic background and I'm gonna show you why in a second. 
So I found this one, it's kind of fancy, I like this one, so I'm gonna right click, hit copy image, and then I'm gonna paste it onto my calendar. Now right now it has this big gray box, but there's a quick and easy way to get rid of that. So when your image is selected, you're gonna to go to image, and you're gonna click on this instant alpha, and this is actually a tool that allows you to erase things that are the same color. So when I click, you're gonna notice the whole screen turns blue. And what that's doing is that's showing me the parts of the picture that it's actually going to erase. As you drag your cursor, the percentage number increases and more of the picture is actually being erased. So you do have to watch and carefully drag it just enough. This particular picture is really hard because part of the pen is actually white. So I'm gonna click once. And since it's so hard to see what is and isn't getting selected, I'm actually gonna move this to another slide to help me out. So I'm just gonna create a blank slide and now you can kind of see it, but it'd be helpful if I had a different background color. So I'm just gonna go to format. I'm gonna grab my color wheel and just pick the first color I see. And now it's really obvious what I need to erase. So I'm gonna go back to that instant alpha and do a little bit more. And you can do little bits and pieces as you go. I'm not loving how this is turning out. It's definitely easier to do with some images compared to others I've discovered. The fact that there's white in this and I'm trying to get rid of a gray background seems to be complicating it a little bit. So I might actually try to go grab a different one and see if I can make that one look any better. But again, I'm gonna use that instant alpha just to try to get rid of as much of that white as I can, zooming up to make sure I can see it all. And I can tell I'm getting much cleaner lines out of this one. Once I'm done, I'm just gonna copy and paste it back to my initial planner, and then I can format it and really make it look the way I want it to look. Now you can do this with anything. So if I wanna find maybe some gold binder clips, I could find that. I've done this with little side plants to put on the side of a planner. I've done it with notebooks. Really anything you want, you can use this instant alpha mask to do. I actually use this a lot when creating my thumbnails for you, my YouTube videos. So if that's something you're interested in learning how I do, make sure you comment below and I can show you. And just like before, once I'm done, I'm just gonna move the image to where I want it to be. And there we have it, my desktop planner is officially done, so my only step now is to export it, and I've showed you how to do this before, but you're gonna export it as a PDF, and then if you're like me and you're working on Apple products, you can simply airdrop it from one to the next. If not, you can use Dropbox or just email it to yourself, that is up to you. And then, like I've shown you before, once you send it to your iPad, it'll automatically prompt you to open it in GoodNotes. You can import it as a new document. And there you have it. Now I've got my desktop planner. And so my goal here is to have one page that I can have open at all times throughout the week, rather than having to flip from page to page to calendar to calendar. And then at the end of the week, I can just erase it. It. I've definitely made much more complicated planners and walked you through how to make turnable tabs and all of those kind of wonderful things but sometimes life can get crazy though and having something simple to just keep track of everything going on can go a long way so I hope this was something you found helpful.